How's it going guys? So in this video, I'm just going to show you how I'm routing machine into Ableton so that I've, I can get each individual sound um, on a separate channel. And yeah, it's nice and quick and there's no messing about. So yeah, this is the way that I'm doing it. So basically within machine, it's got 16 outputs. So you've basically got 16 channels that you could potentially route things to. So just bear that in mind when you're setting things up. So obviously if you use, yeah, like all 16 channels on one one drum rack, for example, because you want all the sounds in a drum rack to go to separate sounds, then obviously you've run out of outputs. So um, yeah, bear that in mind when you're thinking about how you think you're going to want to um, basically split these channels up so that you can get the most out of it. Um, so yeah, the way that I'm doing it, is within this first group here so it's generally like drums and percussion that i'm using on this first um on this a channel here and the way that i've done this is i've got the first i think it's the first nine or ten sounds um going out to their own individual channel so within this group a so this is all the sounds coming from group a coming into here um so yeah if I just play the groove that I've put together just just to show you how it's all working. So if we solo this pad one, so this pad one now is basically this kick. And then pad two is the snare. Then pad three is the hat and, and like so on and so forth all the way down. And then I've only used, I've only done these separate ones up to, so up to pad nine. So if you've got, obviously you've got the machine hardware, it's basically like the the, the, the bottom three rows um, of, of buttons, of pads, sorry. So yeah, I've got up to nine pads going out into separate channels. And then I've obviously got these groups then all going out into their own channel. So yeah, group A is more for yeah individual hits that I want to separate. And then group B, so all of these sounds within group B are going into this group B channel, just one individual one. And then for, yeah, group C is going into here, group D is going into there. So that's the way that I'm basically setting it all up. It gives me, yeah, the ability to use obviously these nine separate pads here for the drums. And then I've got some options along here that I can add some more sounds in some synths, bass lines, and other like sounds that I don't mind them all being on one one channel. Um, and then yeah, I can just record them in nice and quick into Ableton. So yeah, the way that it's actually set up is so I'll show you on Ableton to begin with. So obviously this first channel here is the plugin channel. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to make a MIDI channel that's got your machine on it. So that's like the first channel. And then I've got my group A audio tracks. So obviously, yeah, insert audio track. So these are all just audio tracks. And then they're pulling the sound from, um, from these groups. So what you're gonna to wanna to do first is basically tell machine which pad or which which output channel you want this sound to go to. So on this group channel, this kick here, the first thing you're going to want to do is go on to make sure you're not on the plugin plugin section. You're going to want to go on to this bit here, which is like um, yeah, all your output settings and stuff like that. And then make sure you run output. And then you're basically telling machine right this individual sound so make sure as well that you're not on master or you're not on group make sure that you're on sound um so what you're saying is this sound here i want the output to go to external two so i would leave external one blank because that's basically you kind of master output um so i would start on two so no matter like where you're starting start on external two and then you should be good to go so yeah, select external two for that one. And then just obviously just work your way down. So this one you can see is external three. This one is four. This one is five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 
this is kind of step one. So you've told the machine now. And by the way, as you're doing this, if you've got a groove already playing, what you might find is that it stops playing. So don't worry about that at this point because obviously you haven't you haven't told you haven't set it up on Ableton yet. So although you're sending this sound now to somewhere new, there's nowhere actually listening out for that sound and there's nowhere to play it from. So don't worry too much once you've done this step and you've set up all your outputs. Um, yeah, then you need to do this second step, which is obviously to get the sounds from um, machine coming into Ableton. So the way that you do that is, so yeah, insert a new audio track. So I'm going to do a brand new one just to show you, like, yeah, the whole process basically. So on this bit here, and also if you if you can't see them, so you're going to want to open up just yeah this I/O button there. Um, make sure that's open so you can see all these settings. Maybe even just you don't need the delay, but um, just so you, it all looks the same. Just make sure all these are, are yellow. And then from here, you're going to want to select which channel you want to pull the audio from. And obviously, it's the plug-in channel for us. If you've named it differently, then it might might say something differently. But it's basically the channel where your machine instance is that's the one you want to select so if you go in there and then yeah it's called plugin for me but it might be called something different for you once you've selected that ableton's then gonna recognize the machine's got multiple outputs that you can like choose from so you can see as i said before it doesn't start on one two it starts on three four so that's why you want to not use um not use number one on your first sound so yeah that's why this one's set to two so if that one's set to two and then i set this um to the first one down which is um three and four and then and then um set it to in really important so you're going to want to make sure ableton's listening out for channels uh, sounds coming in and then you can see the sounds coming through so that's that channel there i'm going to delete that because obviously i've already got mine so now you've seen how it's done then this pad 2 is exactly the same so you just select it put it in and then the next one down and then yeah do the same for all of these and then obviously yeah once you've got all of those channels set up then obviously i've grouped them then all these audio tracks i've grouped them into a group a so it's kind of just falls in line with what the plugin looks like. And then these other groups are done slightly differently. So with group C, for example, I've put um, a little bass on there. So this bass here, you can see, is coming through to this group C. So this one's slightly different. So on you, when you're setting it up, remember I said before, where we were selecting the sound and the sound we were sending to somewhere different. We don't want to do that this time. So if you, you've you got like, yeah, channels where you want to send everything within this, then you're going to want to keep the output and the sound onto group. But then you want to go, go onto this group section here and then select which pad you want, uh, which, which output you want, sorry. So, yeah. It's really important if you if you want like the whole group to be sent out, then you're on this tab going across, um, and then yeah that one's set to twelve. So on here again, um, it'll just be the 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 twelfth one down. So um, yeah, that's how I'm setting it up. So obviously the benefit you've got then is when you're let's say th these drums for example, and you want to record them out. What you can then do is select however, like whichever pads it is you want to record. And then if you arm them, so yeah, select them all and then click arm, then you can just record them all in one go. So just open that up as well. You see they're all coming out. So I've actually got the drums uh, muted, which is why you can't hear them, but um, you've actually got all these sounds then on individual channels. So, yeah, and then what you could do then, obviously, you know that this is your kick, so you could pull that out 
um, and put it into your your kind of kick channel or yeah, however you want to go from this point. But yeah, the the reason that was like machine was slowing me down when I first got it because like yeah, everything was just really difficult to get out of machine and start arranging. Once I started doing this and I could just really quickly record stuff out, it really changed the way that I was using machine and yeah, how practical it was for making tunes really. Um, I'm just going to actually just mention one more thing. So obviously this method of doing it and like recording things out like this is is good for these types of like drum racks where you've got loads of different sounds that are playing. But if you've got a sound like this bass, for example, where you've kind of just made the pattern and it's not really changing at all, like it's just um, a fairly small loop, then my preferred method of getting stuff like that out is just to drag it with this button here. So um, just make sure that you're aware of it really because, um, yeah, when I first got Machine, I also didn't know about this button. So, yeah, now that we've got the this pattern in there, to pull this out as an audio, you just need to drag that um, and pull it over into an audio channel. And then, yeah, it's going to pull it out for you. So, yeah, if you're obviously, if you've like got automation or something in here and you want to like record a longer section of the track out, you might want to do it the other way and arm it and then record it and like record out a really long section if you've got stuff that's like changing and moving but if you've just got a little loop that it's going to stay pretty pretty similar then yeah you can just use that button and just drag the audio straight out so yeah i hope this has helped anyway if anyone's got any questions or they're stuck and they're not sure how to do it then yeah drop a comment below and we'll try and help you out cheers <laughs>